So the Harry Potter fan I know asked if I would build the Quidditch chest to display her pieces. As I was preparing to start cutting, she changed her mind and decided to go with one that could be hung on the wall. My objective here is to make this display totally out of scraps, so my end product will not be exact, but it will be close enough for her liking. Having no idea what this looked like, she printed me off a copy from the internet and said make this. So for this project, I have solicited the help of my 10 year old niece who will be doing most of the work on this fun project. I only bought two things for this project, so I can't tell you what it would cost if you're starting with no material. My first purchase was a piece of quarter inch thick, two feet by four feet birch. I started by laying out all the pieces to see how big I needed to make the backboard to ensure everything would fit. I decided on 32 inches wide and I would leave the height at two feet. I made a mark at 32 inches and then I took it to the table saw to cut it to size. I looked through my scrap pile and grabbed the long piece that I thought would work to make a frame around the piece I just cut. Knowing that the height of my base piece is two feet or 24 inches, I added an inch to the top and the bottom to give me 26 inches for my first cut. To save time, we will cut each piece once at 45 degrees. Ensure that your long edge tips are at the 26 inch mark before you cut. Place your pieces in position. They should be half on, half off the base piece. And then take a measurement from outer edge to outer edge to get your next cut length. With that measurement, mark your piece for the next cut. To ensure we don't cut in the wrong direction, we take the speed square and make a 45 degree mark in the same direction as the other end of the piece before we take it to the miter saw. Now with all your pieces cut, we're going to make a slight lip for the frame to sit in. We do this by raising the table saw blade to half the distance of the frame and cutting down the center of the frame piece. Once complete, you can glue your frame together. So while that is drying and she is dancing, I thought that the leftover flooring pieces could come in handy again. So I grabbed a few pieces and I began by gluing them together. When they are dry, you can cut them to size and then create the rounded look that each ring has. Use anything round to take off your corners. Then, using a jigsaw or a bandsaw, cut your lines to give you that curved front look. With your frame dry, you can now place it on your back plate to give it a little support when you begin to sand. This frame is supposed to look a little old, so just a quick sand on the corners to make sure your joints are level. Then, with a Minwax weathered stain, we hit the backboard, just to give it that aged look before we darken the wood. Birch does not exactly take stain well, so if you have to mix and match to get the right tone, don't be afraid to try a few colors. For the outer frame, we reversed the order by putting down a dark stain first, and then we added a charred stain that gives the wood an old fence looking color. With the stain complete, we glue in our backboard. Simply place a bead of wood glue around the lip and lay in your back plate. For a little overkill, we added a few clamps to make sure pressure was applied to the frame and the back plate so there were no gaps. For the lower two shelves, they don't need to be as big as the top one because these balls are a bit smaller. So I take one and place it on my glued pieces of flooring. Make sure no part of the ball extends past the back of the wood part because this is where the back plate will be. Then, Trim off as much as needed to reduce the size. Remember that if you're using leftover flooring like me, to trim off the lip on the back side before you make your final cut. This will make sure you have a flush face to go onto the backboard. Using a protractor, make an arch that will allow at least an inch thick lip. Then trace it out with a sharpie. Do this twice, one for each side. Then go back to the miter saw and cut each piece separate so you now have two. Using a jigsaw or your bandsaw, you can cut the arch that you previously drew out with your protractor. Now if you don't have a lot of scrap wood or you just want to ensure the wood is the same, you can use the top of the arch for your legs for each shelf. This is an option that I considered. 
For the shelf that goes across the center to hold the beater's bats, we decided to go with 8 inches. This was just an arbitrary number we came up with because we thought it looked good when laying out all the pieces on the board in the beginning of this project. So make your mark and cut your wood. Then take your corners off the shelf. For the snitch holder, we will make the display stick out 5 inches. So make your mark and then take the shelf that you just cut and use the width of it to mark down the center of your board. Then find something round that is at least a half an inch larger than the circumference of your snitch and draw out a circle on one end. We used a round cup magnet so I can't actually tell you what the size was but you can see it will be enough to drill a hole inside of it to the allow the snitch to sit in it. Now with all your lines drawn you can cut them out. Before cutting out your long thin lines with a jigsaw or a bandsaw, make sure you drill out a hole in the center of your drawn circle. Allow at least a half an inch perimeter. Now I get to use my catchphrase. I make this up as I go along. Well I really like the fact that the quaffle and the snitch had a hole for them to sink down into, so then I decided to do the same for the bludgers and make holes in their shelves for them to sit in. I think this will help me in the long run when trying to chain them down and in my head if you turn this frame on its side it would represent the actual Quidditch playing field with three large rings. Maybe this is the way it's supposed to be. I don't know you guys are the fans you can let me know or tell me if I'm slowly going insane in the comments below. Drill a few holes inside your circle to allow your blade to slide into the center and then with a jigsaw cut out your holes. If you're not using hardwood flooring like me, this step will be a hundred times easier than it looks here. Repeat this process for all three shelves. Cut a few beater stops for your beater shelf. I just randomly cut two pieces the same size. They don't have to be any specific measurement. Here I am just looking at the best way to display the stops because there are grooves on the underside. Either make them both face inward or outward. It's your choice. We are now going to cut the shelf feet. You will need six squares cut. It is up to you how big you want these to be because they are really just for decoration. The actual shelves will have screws directly into them. To give the shelf supports the arch look, we draw a curve on one of the squares, cut it out, then use the arch as a template to draw the lines on the remaining squares. Then continue to cut them all out. Not too shabby for just freehand cutting these out. Next we glued on all our shelf feet to the shelves and then laid everything out to see how we were progressing. At that point we decided it all looked good and began to stain all the shelves. We used a dark mahogany gel stain. To ensure the beater shelf is not too high, I used a beater itself to gauge whether it left enough room at the top of the display. Then I marked the shelf. For the snitch holder, I used a tape measure to center it and just chose what I thought would be a good distance below the quaffle shelf. Once everything was positioned correctly, I took some painter's tape and placed it along the outline of each object. This would give me boundaries for where to drill my holes. So I placed two holes in each spot. Each hole would be under the location of the shelf itself. I did not drill into any of the shelf feet locations. As I said earlier, the shelf feet were just for decoration. I put the shelves back into place and with a pencil I marked the bottom of each shelf so I could put pilot holes in them. I only did this because the shelves are hardwood. You will probably not need to do this. You will repeat the same process for the snitch shelf. This was a little different as we did place a hole and pilot hole in the shelf foot. Once all your holes are drilled, you can begin attaching your shelves. Simply screw in your shelves with your support screws. Do this by hand since birch is not exactly the hardest of woods and you don't want to drill right through your back plate. Now we are going to build the bludgers retaining chains. Take a round object and draw out a few circles on a piece of thin tin. For those of you who are subscribers, yes, this is leftover tin from the Nimbus 2000 bindings. We used a small can to draw our circles, but anything round will work. 
and then simply take a pair of tin snips and cut out your circles. After that, take a drill and place a hole in the center of the circle. This will help us make and bend our tin into an oval shape. If you want, you can take a sanding stick and file down the edges of the tin so they're not sharp. But then, with your tin snips, cut a line from the outside to the inside of your drilled hole. This will allow you to bend them and shape them more into a cone. Take your drill, drill a small hole once you have the two pieces overlapped, and place a small rivet or a small screw to hold it in place. This will give you your cone shape. Opposite of your small rivet, drill your first hole. This will make your rivet position to the rear and not be seen when the display is hung. I bought four feet of small chain from Home Depot. The cost was actually only $2.50. Then drill two more holes on each side of the cap. They should look like this. I thought it a bit much in a DIY to drill your own dowels. So we waited to get a dowel while we were at Home Depot. This will be the upper part of the beater support. Simply cut two pieces of your dowel about two inches long. Then with a sander, round one of the ends of each one. We will cheat here and use a bench sander, but a regular orbital sander or hand sander will work. Then stain in the same color as the other shelves. So the beaters can rest on the pegs and not slide off, we went back and sanded a small divot into each peg. We laid out the beaters to what we thought looked good and then we marked them. We took those marks and we measured them to ensure that they were identical on each side. We then repeated drilling our holes so we could attach the pegs. The last step to this project was to attach the bludger retaining chains. Start by slightly bending open a link on one end of each chain. Slide it through your cap hole and then with a small screw, screw in the lower end of the chain directly into the shelf. Repeat this step until all six chains are screwed into position. Now the display is ready to be hung. Overall, this is an inexpensive way to display your Quidditch set, and for me it was a great way to spend time with my niece. This display has already found its way into a collection, and if you want to make fun of the way I see bludgers, the comments are all yours. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.